so we're moving on to painting up the bigger sketch. As you can see, there's far more detail in the bigger sketch than our little pre-sketch. So this is fun. It's often nice if you're a detaily person or you like um, to really sketch about and get some feeling into your drawing, then you've got to add more detail. So you might need to add uh, more shapes of plants that you can see, so more ivy. Um, you might want to add some more tone, so some real dark patches, often drawing in the negative, so that you leave little bright patches of grassy bits. So just adding a little bit of dark here and there, which you will re-emphasize with paint, but with the pen, it will add drama. So here again, in the branches, We'll um, just add a little bit more tone, a little bit more strength so that they're nice and bold. And anywhere that you think is really dark, so perhaps in this trunk here, got a little bit of dark in here that I quite like. Again, I can go in with the pen quite heavily or I can add more colour later with paint and just re-emphasize that. This bit of the bank is quite dark, so I'd like to draw that in quite heavily with pen. It helps with the shadow in the picture, so giving us some contrast to the light areas. And that's enough, really. I did put a little bit more detail here, so from the pre-sketch, it was very simple, but here I've put some soil marks, some more straggly bits of grasses breaking through. Adding more interest, it's a bigger drawing, it needs more detail. You can do that with paint, or you can do it with your pen. I enjoy doing it both ways, it depends what mood I'm in in the day. So that's enough really, and then that needs to dry. So, given that we're doing a bigger painting I've introduced another brush so probably an eight um, a six or an eight so that we can be more flamboyant with our marks so I'm going to start in a similar way I'm going to use um, cerulean blue for the sky and mix enough up I'm just going to quickly wash that in so I'm not going to be precious I'm not going to be precious about the marks I'm going to keep the paint quite fluid I understand how transparent colours work, so I know how far to go down in the picture before um, you get to a point where you know it will affect the colours that you're painting in. So you don't want the blue to go into the burnt sienna areas because that will make it muddy. So just go down to the top of where the, um, the burnt sienna hedge is. Then we're going to go to burnt sienna. So we had burnt sienna with a little tiny bit of yellow, transparent yellow, and a little bit of alizarin. So we're going to put that through the middle here. So this is a soft wash, quite pale. Not going to worry too much whether it's the correct colour yet. But we're going to go in with our lights. And then anywhere you want any twiggy bits to have the same sort of feel. So you can be generous with this for now. You can always cover this up. But remember, if you don't put it in, you're never going to get it back. Okay, so then onto our light greens. So anything that's nice, bright, yellowy green, put that in. If it's too yellow, it looks a little bit yellow, I might put a bit more green in there then you can tone it down later. It's not a worry if you haven't got your colours absolutely correct at this point because transparent colours allow you to layer up your colours and change them, which is great. So we're going to put uh, this greeny yellow in here, which is the field beyond the uh, hole in the hedge. Let's put a little bit in there, keep it quite bright and yellow. You can always dab it off like we did previously. Just take a bit of the strength out of the colour, the kitchen roll. And then standard green, maybe just a little bit bluer. You could add a tiny bit of burnt sienna. 
sorry, tiny bit of phthalo blue. And that will give us that lovely contrasting green. So let's continue and use slightly bluer greens. There's quite a cool, lots of cool greens in here. 